As the pandemic hit, certain businesses came to the fore to help everyone communicate while working from home. One of these businesses was Slack, described as one of the fastest growing software as a service startups in history. Their tagline of be less busy shows what their mission is, but hides the work going on behind the scenes as Slack raced from being an internal tool born out of necessity to become one of the most popular chat tools in the world. But what is the story of Slack and how have they become one of the most important tools for business? Here's how it happened. First of all, what is Slack? Well, it's messaging software designed for businesses that helps to connect people to the information they need. And although it seems like a simple concept, it has a very interesting backstory. It all started with Stuart Butterfield, who was known for playing a part in building Flickr, which came about after a failed attempt at a game called NeverEnding. After selling Flickr to Yahoo, Butterfield teamed up again with Flickr's original chief software architect, Cal Henderson, as well as Eric Costello and Sergei Murachov to build TinySpec. TinySpec was a business behind a non-combat, massively multiplayer online role-playing game, which was released as Glitch, a game set inside the brains of 11 giants. Despite launching the game and raising $15 million in funding, Glitch was decommissioned in 2012 as it hadn't attracted a big enough fan base to sustain itself. But whilst the game was a failure, the team had built an internal communication tool to link their US office to their Canadian headquarters. The team thought it was commercially viable, marketing Slack as a cloud-based collaborative chat platform to make conversations between team members easier. In 2014, the business raised over $120 million, reaching a billion dollar valuation without a CMO or spending any money on traditional advertising. And thanks to a marketing blitz, over 8,000 people requested an invitation to try Slack on the first day of release, which rose to 15,000 people two weeks later. Whilst they released the software as beta, they avoided using that word because beta often suggests the product is buggy and unstable. They continued in a beta format for six months to understand how companies use their software differently and how to improve their offering. Why the name Slack, I hear you ask? Well, it stands for searchable log of all conversations and knowledge. Clever. By 2015, Slack was adding over a million dollars a month in recurring revenue and had over 500,000 daily active users across 60,000 teams. Unlike most startups, however, Slack grew steadily and methodically, receiving feedback and then implementing any relevant changes. Slack offered teams transparency to see who was working on what and centralization, allowing everything to operate through Slack whether you're at your work computer or on your smartphone. Slack had also attracted some massive companies quickly, like BuzzFeed, Medium, SoundCloud, and Lonely Planet, which helped to add authenticity to the business. At this point, Slack was worth $3 billion. But how do they earn money? Well, Slack operates a freemium business model to encourage companies to test their offering risk-free. Slack decided to make their paid plans inexpensive so that even small teams within companies could use it and expense it. Its free version is almost as good as its paid version, just with fewer search functions and fewer team integrations. But the cost of upgrading is so low and so seamless that it's almost a no-brainer. Slack's growth was quite amazing because in April 2015, they had 750,000 daily active users with over 200,000 people paying for the service. In 2017, SoftBank led another funding round and that same year, Slack introduced European language options as well as introducing intercompany channels, which were limited in terms of business utility but were great as a social network feature. In 2018, they hired Alan Shim as their first CFO, which made sense as they were valued at $5 billion with 6 million daily active users and monthly revenues of $200 million. A year later, and Slack went public through a direct listing in June 2019 at a valuation of $23 billion, far surpassing the $16 billion prediction. The story doesn't end there though, because as of December 2020, it was announced that Salesforce would acquire Slack in a $28 billion deal to further improve the global CRM's offering, which should conclude at some point this year. 
While Slack does a lot of things right, there are still concerns around sensitive discussions being held on tiny specs servers, and others find that seeing so many messages on a daily basis can be a distraction from the day job. But Slack is still popular among the majority of Fortune 100 companies, and the future looks bright as the goal is to create AI-driven robots to work as virtual assistants, allowing employees to prioritise certain tasks. Even though Slack is dedicated to work, it's fun with a colourful background and emoji immersion. Even the name Slack points to slackers, those who can't be bothered to work so hard. Slack is therefore more than just a communication tool, it's cool. And according to investors, never before have we witnessed so much user love for an enterprise software platform. Life is a lot better with less email. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.